what am I going to do and to who and how? Hmm. Sometimes it might not happen within 24 hours. It'll be longer, you know, because hmm. I first need to study the person's movement, what they're doing, how they're doing it, how they're treating me. Sometimes when a person is too nice, it's too hard hmm. to, to do stuff. You yeah. know? But I really did accomplish most of the things that I wanted to accomplish. You know, mm. I know the only one I think he couldn't is to break up this temple. That was Jarida and Bumi. Mm. <laughs> you know, he couldn't. Uh, let me see. Oh no, we cooked steak, and then afterwards they took the key to to the storeroom. They put the meat yes. in the storeroom. Now we don't have access because I said I don't want anybody cooking for me anymore. Yes, and I was like ah, I don't want people cooking for me anymore. I'm gonna cook for my people. I used to call them the comedy corner. Hmm. So comedy corner, it's me, it's my keke, it's him, and who and Willie and Bappy. Hmm. They see, yeah. When I cook, I'm gonna cook for those people, you know. Hmm. But I, I did accomplish most of the things that I set out. I would accept some of the games, of course. Oh, I played the games when I when I was when I was muted. Hmm. <laughs> yes, I played some, and I and, and I would trick them, and I would yeah. tell them funny stories about my upbringing. Hmm. Now, I, yes. I mean, I, I, I saw that you, and you see, I think this is where a lot of the viewers miss it. A lot of people's interpretation about drama when it comes to this show is people that make it loud, you know, people that get angry loudly, people that just make it loud and very, very noisy, you know, like take for instance, now you see on different seasons of the show where somebody is very upset and they are breaking things, or maybe they are just getting all crazy and violent. A lot of viewers actually have come to accept that as the drama that they want to see on the show. But then they also forget that this thing called drama it comes in different packages, you know, and yes. that was exactly what you were doing. The very subtle drama dished out in the most tactical way, you know, but people forget. Yes, yeah. And I want to give you your flowers again for the hundredth time for, <laughs> yeah, for, for also assisting some of the housemates because prior to that fake eviction, the house was getting boring. We were getting recycled content from the same old, same old ship, the same old, same old storyline, the same old, same old thing. And I don't know if you've heard, there was a serious war that was being fought out here. <laughs> there was a serious hey. war that was being fought out here. I was at the forefront then of that war. Then people must leave the house. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't even about you people leaving the house. It was, it was about housemates that got the most screen time, right? Certain housemates were getting more screen time than other people so it became a problem for me especially and a lot of other people i mean if you've heard then that was the case so the moment you both were evicted um, fake evicted and you came back and you started dishing out advice to the housemate on what they could do to spice yes. up the show things yes. changed things changed yes. i don't know if you noticed that people started changing and switching up their game in the house I remember telling Sanaya how to do it with Mele hmm. because I'm like, everybody calls you Ikiyan, Ichiyan, which is a, a, a gentleman that moves from being a boy to a man in the Koso world. And I'm mm -hmm. like, why don't you groom her to be that woman? Why hmm. don't you make sure that she brings the plate to, your, to you when you eat? Hmm. Why don't you do this? You know, it's like, oh, Lerato, actually, you know, because, yes, you have a girlfriend, mm -hmm. but play, guys. Let's have fun. This was mm -hmm. a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Know? We, 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 we tried. Well, I tried. I tried giving some advice. Some will take it. Some won't, you know. But we mm. really did. And I we hope really people did. actually saw that because it was quite unfortunate that, you know, Certain fans from certain fan groups, they were so carried away with all the, the toxicity of the season that they forgot to see that the advice that you and your partner were dishing out to some of their faves was actually helpful to how some of them played their game moving on from that time you guys came back, you know. So I, I just hope that they see the dynamics of the game and not just only 
zero their minds to what they think is the fact of the season. But anyways, let's let's continue. Let's continue. Now, aside yes, from your... <laughs> okay, well, aside... madam. <laughs> Funny. Okay, so aside your friendship with Papa Ghost and your relationship with Papa Ghost, there were two people as well that were very interesting. You know, they had very interesting storylines connected to yours. There was Yolanda, and there was mac jr <laughs> right so mm -hmm. with yolanda I, I think people need to hear from you what are your true sentiments about yolanda in the house back then and <laughs> outside the house now because there's a lot of misconception out there which i don't want to repeat I, i'm sure you must have heard but i think people need to hear in the house ne? Hmm. I wanted to create drama with her because she is, remember she's loud and I'm like, this one is a vibe. Hmm. This one is a vibe. She's an entertainer, this one, because already everyone's complaining about her noise. You know, hmm. I'm just going to say the noise is giving me a headache while well, she's contributing to my headache. Hmm. Y'all, I had such a soft spot for her. Hmm. I had such a soft spot for her and even if I want to bring out the, the, the baddie in me. It wasn't easy, you mm. know? And she never gave me the chance for me to tell her about me, you know? She, mm. she was, I remember the time when she, she had a breakdown and she's like, call me when you want to talk. I'm like, okay, come. She's mm. talking. I'm like, look, we might not have this time again, you know, yeah. in my head, but let's talk. And then there was a time when Mitch and Chuenza left and I wanted to go confide her. Yo! And then she threw me off. <laughs> you know? I'm like, oh, well. And then I used to share whatever, she, anything that she asks from me, I would share with her. I would stand up for her where people are not, don't want to buy into her idea. Hmm. I would say, do it. Don't wait for them. You know? Hmm. And Look, she, I think she can even attest that I was very, very kind to her, even though, look, she played, she played me smart, that one. I can give her flowers too. <laughs> she played me super, super smart, you know, because yeah. she thinks we're joking. And every, I, I stopped sharing my dreams. I remember I told her that, you know, I dreamt of myself having, um, a campaign with kids with vitiligo because I've I've been with a few. I have a friend that's mm. got vitiligo. Yeah. And you were part of it, you know? Mm. And then she had a dream about me where she got to my house and I didn't want to give her food. I'm like, you see the difference? I'm having good dreams about you. You're having such dreams about me. Yet I'm the same person that gives you food. When I'm eating this and you ask for it, I give it to you, you know? And then we go back to the day I didn't want to give her food. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to spice it up. And you know how I wanted to do it? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I thought about it. As I'm dishing up, I'm like, oh, can I, her, her and Liam had a little thing happening yesterday. Let me just add some spice. Hmm. And I'm like, to Ghost, Ghost, I don't want to dish up for Yolanda, you know? Mm -hmm. And Ghost is like, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. um, dish up, dish up, and then dish out food. Mm -hmm. But she came faster than that. And she took food. <laughs> she took food. She was too fast today. <laughs> so that was my plan. My plan was to dish up and dish out. Hmm. You know? And then she was there to take the food. And then she, she was like, go jump in the pool. Yes. And it was a... I wanted to go jump in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Honestly, it was so funny. And I love the fact that you or Ghost did not react the way people would have expected. Because people were thinking, oh, you guys will go and collect the plate of food. But the fact that people left it, I said, okay, better, better, better. Otherwise, the house will burn. The internet will burn. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted. You know, I wanted to dish up and then dish out and not, not give it to her and then we're gonna start something you yeah her, you know because yolanda was fun like yolanda y yolanda in in a nutshell was an entertainer she was 
She was. She really was an entertainer. So for me, and then she's gonna fight me about ghost this, ghost that. I'm like, girl, relax. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> his hours is going you can you can come to and have it i see you guys as siblings because hmm. they will bicker together hmm. and then sometimes i'm like to go remember we agreed that you can't argue with women hmm. why and then i must keep quiet because if i tell him yo he's gonna tell me his extensive english i'm like you know what? let me just watch them argue <laughs> Sorry, this content they are giving people content they are siblings no, it was fun, man. <laughs> you know, you know one thing fun. I liked about how you handled your relationship with Papa Ghost. I noticed that when he is having like an altercation, just like an argument, I noticed that you give him the room to purgate, which is very important. Because yes. as I always say, in Big Brother's house, purgation is necessary to avoid an implosion. Yes. But a lot of people don't get it, you know. And it makes me wonder, like, why do they feel like it's okay for certain housemates to explode when they are upset and then others should be the bigger person? As in people themselves, there's no, there's no such thing as being the bigger person. And it felt like you totally understood that. So when Papa Ghost had his, you know, one-off with someone, I loved how you just allow him, let him, you know, purgate. And then afterwards, you both talk about it that was really mature of you that was really mature but deep down he wanted me to fight and i'm like uh-uh nah this is your game nah that's Play. his game <laughs> mm -hmm. you know that was his game so I, mm. I i wanted to give him room to do that yeah that was yeah. very necessary yes. that was very necessary but now back to your relationship with yolanda Make yes it, it, it felt like it was a love-hate relationship because i never ever take you people's argument serious because it's like today you people have your little spats here and there tomorrow you guys are having conversations and i'll just be laughing at people that actually think you people are sworn <laughs> enemies in the house please can you explain that dynamic so that people will understand look um i didn't like how she treated my KK, knowing how my KK feels about her mm -hmm. and how she would speak to my KK but I was like anyway maybe that's how she wants to play it so mm. I was just that sister that saying girl you can't speak to a man like that you can't do this and remember don't disrespect my partner mm. I had to highlight that aside from that people in the house thought it was a love-hate relationship mm. I on the other hand think Yolanda and I are not twin flames but we are, we're just stars waiting to align. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. You know, it's just a matter of time. We, we shine bright in our own ways, hmm. you know, and we, we understand, I think both of us did understand this assignment. She just hmm. played it a little bit smarter than me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, between, between both of you, yeah. Um, I kind of felt like she likes you just as you likes her, but because the game has to be played, you yes. both cannot let your guard down. I saw no. that mutual respect. I, 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 I recognized some sort of um, acknowledgement from her. She knew you were playing your game. And so you were like competition and she had to play the game. So there was no room for softness or being nice. No. Yeah, and I, I felt like it was okay, but people were not seeing that. No, behind closed doors, her and I, I'll tell you something. So she gets disqualified, right? Mm. And then as she gets disqualified, we meet. And I'm like, remember we shared steak? Let's share mm. chicken. <laughs> and we shared... <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> you know? I'm like, let's move. Let's yeah. move, girl. And our bags used to sit adjacent to each other. Hmm. Like, and every time I have to sleep by your land, I'm like, hey, when you must come sleep your space. <laughs> I'm not going to sleep where your bags are. Hmm. Because she's, she's also a lazy one, you know? <laughs> and then I'll be looking at her. Remember, I remember watching her and I came back to her. I'm like, remember you're a model, right? Hmm. So as a model, when you walk, pick up your feet. Oh, we're hmm. heels. 
And yeah. she's like, oh, okay. And then she started wearing heels. Oh. Because she does wear heels anyway. That's yeah. when she started wearing heels in her lingerie. I'm like, don't don't drag your feet. Pick up your heels. Pick up yeah. your shoes and wear your heels. Because I even love how you walk. Hmm. You know? The first prank I did in the house, I said to them, Big Brother said we must do Mr. and Miss Big Brother. And Yolanda, <laughs> you must be in charge of our poise, our pose, and how we walk. Hmm. I, and then they busted that I'm lying because I couldn't hold my my, my giggles. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody was already preparing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, for real. I I really loved seeing both of you having your go at each other at each other because, hey, it, it's part of the game. It's part of the show. It, the show has to has to be entertaining. And even though sometimes it looked serious, but I just kind of liked the fact that you guys just knew how you know to stir shit up and you knew how to clean up. For me, it was the clean up afterwards that really mattered. You know, it's like to your tent, oh Israel. Everybody's done playing that part and it's okay. Now let's go and re-strategize on how to cause disruption for another day. So kudos to both of you. You guys really did well. But now moving on to moving on to Mac Jr. Mac Jr. is still in the house, so I'm not going to give too much emphasis to whatever. But what are your real sentiments about Mac Jr. in the house and now that you're out of the house? Even when I was still in the house, I I did say that I would love to have a conversation with him out because him and I used to sleep um, parallel. No, not parallel, but next to each other. Yes. Mm. You know, we didn't speak for the first few days, you know. Mm. And then there's an incident that happened with him and with him and Ghost when we were outside about the script. Mm. And then we then... I see that uh, uh, this guy is lying. Why is he doing this? Mm. And then I got upset. We followed through with the with the wager, and then we had our speed date. And I said to him, "Let's start with a good morning." You know, mm. I wake up. He he's changing batteries with us. I say good morning. He doesn't say good morning. I'm like, "Guy, it's okay. Let's mm. move on." I will fight my men's battles with him. <laughs> That's how I just took it. Nothing personal. Absolutely. Nothing personal. Hmm. Okay. But I just had to act like, uh uh-uh, I don't want you. I don't like you. Hmm. Because yes. he felt like, he felt like, uh, not even felt, what he has said um, on different occasions, maybe during his diary session and even during the face-to-face um, nomination you people had in the garden at the campfire side, um, he felt like you were inheriting um, the his issues with papa ghost you know so do you do you think that that was actually the case or you just had your own personal differences with him i was being a wife and i was (laughs) fighting my husband's battles nothing personal (laughs) my 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 at home affairs i'm not married so when I come out, him and I, I and I would, be, I'd even be sarcastic and say, "Make Junior my best friend." Yeah, <laughs> you know. So he must yeah. if he is smart enough to read in between the lines that Ish, you know. And if we always bump into each other, and he was the one person that will always walk into our fights with ghosts, hmm. and then we must keep quiet hmm. and move on with our lives. No, this look. There's <laughs> absolutely nothing personal with anybody in the house it was me playing a very fun game yeah yeah i enjoyed it i saw that i saw that i saw that okay let's move on to the fate room that was oh my god now that was have you first of all have you recovered from that episode i recovered the minute i walked out hmm Hmm. The minute I walked out, I recovered. I, I, when Willie got the red ball the previous week, so let me tell you how it started. Okay. So I get the red ball. I'm sitting down. No, before I get the red ball, I'm sitting down. I'm looking at the floor. And I'm like, universe, what's going to happen? Which hand must I use to pick the ball? Hmm. It says the red hand. So even how I positioned my hand when I put my hand inside the box, I picked that fi- the, the, the ball with my thumb. Mm. 
because of the picture that I saw on the bottom. I think it's a paint stain and it was like a hand, a fist. Hmm. So the, the thumb was out. I'm like, okay, I'm going to choose with the fist. Then hmm. I stand next to Willie. Willie's like, good luck. I'm like, how did you see? You hmm. know? I'm like, hmm, okay. Hi, I'm excited, you know? Hmm. I remember I'm ready, I'm ready to go to the to Paris, head hmm. of house. It's my first time. Yeah. And as I was looking at the head of house, there was something in my ear, a little birdie saying to me, You're not gonna sleep there. Wow. And you will always try to push it away, you know, push the negative thought away. And I was just looking at those green pillars and I was like, You're not gonna sleep there. And even the song I was singing in my head for the week it was a song a Sutu song Hmm. that speaks about the end of the road wow you know so i didn't go i'm excited i don't know what to expect Hmm. you know i i then stand there big brothers like eviction or finale i i I swear on my father's grave i never saw finale wow i walked in so as you are walking into the arena to where the fate room is, hmm. there are robots. You know, these lights are in robotical colors. There's blue, there's red, there's orange. Yes. There was a green and a blue one as I walked in. And I was looking at the green one. And the green one happened to be on the left hand. Hmm. Which is why when I looked at my video, I was skeptical to use the right hand. And then I remembered, yes. oh, I must use the left one because the robot is on the left. Hmm. And then we landed on eviction. And I was like, hmm. can I try again? You know, I knew hmm. that was not going to happen. And I went out and I was like, hmm. that was heavy. Okay. That's a bit steep, you know. Hmm. And my when I left home, just I left home on a Friday. Hmm. And the Sunday the show was starting, I remember looking at the key holder that was behind the door. The number was 50. Hmm. I left on day 50, week eight. My transmitter was number eight. Wow. The universe said it's time. That's why the acceptance was so okay. I was okay. Hmm. I'd sit there, stand outside. I only just got emotional when I saw ghosts. I was like, oh, <gasps> It broke yo, him. I don't want it to talk about it. it. I was <laughs> yo, 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 yo. Even now, it's like hmm. I'm okay. I I still need to talk to him. Yeah, he was the one person that I grew an understanding with. You know, but that's hmm. not that's a topic for another day. <laughs> yeah. Nah that that day that day was very sad for me. I mean, I was, I, I think that was the, the season in general has been rough. And I keep saying that <laughs> if, if you've heard, then you would understand what I mean. It's been really rough. And then that, I think that was the only major event that really shocked me to the core. And I found, I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't accept it because it was really a shocker. That was a good twist, by the way, from Big Brother, but it was really shocking. Like, nobody saw it coming that it was going to be you. Yeah, nobody saw it coming. And I'm really glad that you said that you have recovered because do you know that that thing stuck with the remaining housemates for a while? I mean, yeah, usually when people get evicted, people talk about them for like just a few minutes and then they forget about them. But yours stuck with them in that house for a while. Mm. They they couldn't get over it because they were scared. All of them that were nominated, they they were just thinking about, oh, it could have been me. It could have been me. It could have been me. So they were all shocked. They were all shocked. Yeah. No, it was time. It was Mm. time. And I will never fight what the universe wanted from me. Yeah. And it's so funny that just moving towards those days, Ghost kept saying to me, you keep misplacing your crystals. What hmm. is happening? You know? And hmm. I was like, I don't know, but these two just keep disappearing. These two crystals that I have. And that was one thing that I was judged for in the house. And I think yeah. our connection also started because when I met him, he had a crystal. And I had a crystal. I was like, okay. 
with a crystal gang. <laughs> You know, no. you know, I think about this crystal, I think this is the right time for you to enlighten people. Because I saw some very, very weird comments here and there on, you know, this XR people saying that, oh, she's a witch. She's a witch. I'm like, look at their mouth. It's she's a witch, you know. So I feel like some people don't really understand the significance of your crystals and your religious beliefs. So if you can just enlighten people a bit, just briefly, let them understand, you know, how free you are with your ideologies and maybe they can just get a peek into your world for a bit. Okay, so I come from a Christian background. Okay. I was a Sunday school teacher, you know, mm. and... I keep talking about my Muslim friend who changed her ways of living when she transitioned to being Muslim. And I was like, I like how she's just become such an amazing woman. Mm. And then I lived with my older sister, um, Lebu, and I speak about her as one of my mentors. Mm. And she introduced me into the crystals and the universe and speaking into the universe. And it took me some time to understand. And then my grandmother one time, had these stones, but she didn't understand them either. You know, hmm. she had an amethyst, and then she gave it to me. She's like, I, I don't know what these things are for. You know, hmm. and then I took it. And then my sister then introduces me to crystals that they actually promote a flow of good energy and get rid of bad energy. There's hmm. a way in which you clean them, you know, hmm. and. I started carrying crystals with me. I started with a um, citron. It's, it's believed that it attracts uh, wealth, mm. you know. And believe it or not, I've never had to struggle with money. Mm. Because, again, it's my belief. Whatever you, whatever, whatever you believe in will work for you. Absolutely. You know? So that has been my belief. And I'm still educating myself more about crystals. I've never been to a psychic. I've never been to a palm reader or anything. Mm. So edu I always buy crystals that I'm attracted to. Mm. Nice. Bye. And the crystal life is still working for me. Mm. I know the Bible very much so. I have a Bible with me, mm. you know. I just have certain questions about the Bible and I will never um, say anything bad about the Bible, hmm. you know, anything bad about church. I remember I said this to someone that I go, I want a church that's open 24 hmm. seven. Number one, I believe that at church, you must come as you are, hmm. you know, Hence, I speak about a girl called Ginger in one of the characters I played mm. for a wager task. The story of Ginger is one I'd like to elaborate one day. And mm. it's like she wants to repent from being a prostitute, but she's chased out of church because of how she's dressed. But that's mm. all she has. Mm. You know, all she needs is your prayers. And then mm. I found a church, Roman Catholic. Mm -hmm. And it was always open. You know, my friends took me there on Christmas Eve to sing Christmas carols because I love singing Christmas carols. They took me back to primary school. So mm -hmm. I went there and all I wanted to do was just to get inside, pray and get out. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been getting from it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I live with a priest. My uncle is a priest. My grandmother has, it, it's my family is so invested in church and I support them fully. They know because mm. church has also helped me to a certain degree, but I'm like, now that I'm old enough to have my own decision, may I please choose this? Exactly. Because you're living at in my grand's house. You are told that when we go to church, we're going to lock the gate. Hmm. So when I don't want to go to church, you are going to go to the mall with your dog. Hmm. You know, and that's when I was like, I'm independent. I found my independence, and out of my independence, this is who I've become. Hmm. Yes. So hmm. my belief, people should probably get to understand the crystal world. Just be open-minded. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that deep. It really isn't that deep. 
Mm. Just be open. Other people are atheists. Other people don't believe in anything. Don't subscribe to anything. True. So at least I have a way of living that works for me. Yeah. There are different. There are a lot of religions out there. You know, I always mm. say I'm more spiritual than I am religious. Yes. Very important. Yes. You know, I mean, I appreciate you explaining this, you know, because as you know, people condemn what they do not understand. And it goes to show you the level of ignorance that exists, you know, in this part of the world. People just condemn and condemn. If they don't understand it, then it's bad. If they don't understand it, then it's negative, you know, but... <clears throat> They, they need to understand that the world doesn't work that way. You know, the fact that people are aware that, okay, maybe some people know that, oh, it's just maybe two religions that are very popular, that they recognize doesn't mean that there aren't other spiritual practices that people mm. have out there. I mean, from um, Big Bibin Zam, this is in three, that was in Poa Badimo, the winner. She was a Sangoma in my life. Yes. In my life, I never, ever knew who a Sangoma was, I'd never heard about anybody like that. But the moment the season started and I started having conversations with my community on, you know, here on YouTube, a lot of South Africans that knew, they started educating me and I appreciated that world the more. And that was when I realized that, oh, actually, people like Mpua Badimo, they face a certain level of stigma. Yes, yes, you know, from their own society. And this stigma is coming from a place of lack of understanding. People don't understand. People don't even know. So they just condemn, you know, they condemn the, the, the religion for what it is. And then they condemn the individual that has found their path and their calling in it. And it's really sad. It's really sad. So when I saw certain comments about you, you know, whilst you were in the house, how I mean, how do you educate millions of people that don't have that understanding? How? So it was just really sad. So yeah, I mean, thank you. Thank you for explaining that. Now, to crown yes. it up, to crown it up, this is your time, you know, again, to, to share about you, Lerato. If there's anything you feel people do not know about you, people do not understand you, please preach about yourself to these people because as i said before the the perception about you you know from a lot of let's call them fanatics now you know it was just really sad like people could not differentiate between the game and the, the individual that went into big brother's house to play the game to participate in a social experiment you know to give entertainment it was just really sad so just sell yourself, you know, preach to people about you. Okay. So I'm Larato Mutise. I got into the Big Brother house because what I was doing for me, it was an educational experiment mm -hmm. based on a lot of factors that affect us in our everyday lives. Mm -hmm. And I've always said, and I still say that the show for me says 18 SNL. It's so unfortunate that the kids that I develop and kids that I work with were watching and the feedback coming from the kids is so incredible because they can say to me that I relate with one, two, three, four, five hmm. based on what was happening in the house. So I'm sorry they watched it and I'm happy that they still love me, but I just want to say to everybody that I've I've always and I've always wanted to tell stories just by invoking conversations. And I did that by being different every single day, mm. by acting out of character, by making myself very uncomfortable, mm. and by making sure that I am going to sell myself in the most smartest and most intellectual of ways because I'm infobetic. I want mm -hmm. people to to really wonder what is she gonna do? How I mean my people right now are like you have to rebrand. I'm like, what am I rebranding? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I work with kids. Mm. I want kids, I want to start my anti-bullying campaign. Mm -hmm. I want to start a campaign where I want the abled and the living with disability coming together. Mm -hmm. I want I help to open up a crash. I hope to become an industrialist. 
Mm -hmm. I'm a businesswoman. I want to be an actress. I've always wanted to be an actress, you know. And mm. the fact that I'm able to do all of these things, it means that I'm very gifted and I all gratitude to God mm -hmm. and to the woman that gave birth to me and the woman that raised me because I was not only raised by one person, but by a village. And yes. even today, the women that come to me to support me, you know, mm -hmm. it's so... It's funny how I come at the house. There are people who are with me. And I mean, I don't watch the show anymore, right? Mm. <clears throat> they come to me. Sorry. They come to mm. me. They are with me. They want to help me. They are, they sad with me. They happy with me. They just say, if you need anything, just call us. Mm. The men, the men are like, we want women like you. We want a fashion brand from you, Lerato. We, we need a clothing line. Please, ah, you can so see cool. your color. You know what it's called? <laughs> I, I think if you guys remember, let me tell you about my relationship with Yolanda. Tell Yolanda, me, on, the, um, on the show, when it was awards, hmm. and I was like, you need to say who you dressed by. I'm like, say you dressed by by birth. By birth hmm. is my brand that one day I'd like to have because nice. I dress what I believe. My nice. fashion sense, at home they think I dress ugly, but I'm like, if you're talking, it means I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. Me? If it's ugly and you're saying something, it mm -hmm. means a heads up. Thank you. Maybe I should start a fashion brand Let's and I will talk. come tonight. For now. real. For real. You have to. See, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not capping right now. I'm telling you, your style is so unique. And it's not even about the dresses now. It's about the way you wear them. The dresses are not wearing you. You are wearing them. And the moment you put on your outfits, even on Sundays during the live eviction, there's a whole new personality I am seeing. So it's like your, your, your fits comes with an entirely new life of its own. And someday I would love to experience it too. <laughs> because personally, I'm not so adventurous with my fashion style, but... If I see something that's that intriguing, I would want to try it. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that really admired how you, you covered up yourself because that was very key. You covered up and you still stood out. You always made a statement with your outfits and the colors, the fabrics. It was always very flowy. Come on. You were giving, oh, you were serving. <laughs> <laughs> you were I forgot about the fashion sense. I ah. I totally forgot about the fashion sense that I'd wear. And every time I want to wear something short, ghost would be like, don't forget, you're Miss Robot. I'm like, okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs> Do you let me give you let me give you a tip here? Yeah? Do you know that the way yes. you dress here, yeah, it's it's so fun and very relatable to people that still have their inner child alive. So yes. imagine coming up with a clothing line and then you have kids, you know, they want to have their birthday parties or they have events they want to attend. Your outfits would definitely grace that occasion to perfection. I'm telling you for free. Oh my God. I'm telling you, you for see, free. You know, in 2020, mm -hmm. I had a um, Robotical. That's when Robotical was founded in 2017. That's my company. Hmm. And I had a clothing range for kids. Hmm. But I realized that the clothing industry is very tedious because of sales and seasons, you know. Hmm. And at the time, I think I had, I had so much going on. I was studying. I've got businesses happening on the side. I'm working. So thank you so much. I hmm. am going to look into it. I know I have... Uh, an abundance of women who are waiting to say, girl, let's get on. Sweetheart, let's get on. use those start? kids. You, <laughs> you see those start? kids? Work with those mothers. Work with those kids. You see those people that are yes. telling you, if you need anything, come to me. My sister, hold on to them. Tell them you need hey, them. Hey. <laughs> hold on ah, to them. Thank you. <laughs> hold on to them. Hold on to them. No, but really, thank you. really. You, I, I, I personally, will. I personally think you are such an incredible human. And I'll tell you again, it's not because we're having this conversation right now. No, you know, you went into that house and you lived everything I, I dreamed of seeing in any individual that would want to participate on any Big Brother show. There, there's this thing I do on my channel on YouTube before the beginning of every new season, right? Um, 
I always do um, my expectations for the new season. And people yes. that follow my videos, they, they know. I always say, I'm looking for individuals that have audacity, that are audacious, that are confident, mm -hmm. that are vocal, you know, that are expressive, that are going to play the game with tact. And if at all, they want to ship, because personally, I don't like shipping as a strategy, you know. But yeah. if at all, they are going to ship, they should ship with drama. They should ship with sense. They should ship with reason. And that was exactly what you did. The moment you started playing your game, you know, with Papa Ghost, I was shocked. I'm, I'm thinking, oh my God, did this girl watch my video? Did she? Did she Girl, that time, I, I, I thought to myself, I was going to nominate him first. Yeah. Yes, I thought, I'm like, nigga, I keep telling, you know, I was going to nominate you first. Hmm. You know? <laughs> ah, but nah, never. <laughs> Not yeah. a child. Now, you really, you really played your game. And this season would not be complete without you. That just a few of you, I mean, kudos to all the housemates for giving their all, playing the game in the, in the best way they know how to. But for me personally, there's just like a, j just a handful of you guys that really brought your A game, that were actually playing the game. Some of your fellow housemates, they were mainly reactors. They were waiting for things to happen yes. so that they could react. But the likes of you, you weren't a reactor. You were the one making shit happen or one of the persons making shit happen. And it's not easy in such an environment to make things happen, mm -hmm. to keep... I mean, girl, you wake up in the morning, dust is raised already and people are getting blinded by the dust. It takes a lot of power to do that. And you were one of those few housemates that was able to bring that to the table. You know, you made it colorful. And your conversations, oh my God, were so intellectual. Very intellectual. Ah, Thank in Lagos, you. we'll say you took guest sense. You, you, you took guest sense. <laughs> you took guest sense. <laughs> <laughs> you too get sense. You too wise. Like girl, you were. Your conversations were very educative. They were very enlightening. You just, it was just different. It was just different. And I'm telling you all this so that you would really understand from a viewer's perspective. You know what you brought to the show. And I'm speaking from one that was able to experience the show mentally and not emotionally. You really yes. served. You delivered on the theme of the season. You really delivered. And you should be proud of yourself for that. You should be. For real. Uh, Madam, be. Ah, how do I say thank you now? <laughs> hey, Omo, I love you. <laughs> No, for real, girl. I mean, come on. Give yourself a pat on the back. You did that. And in case nobody has told you, this season was one of the most fucked up season for so many reasons. People around you will tell you why Gloria Elijah is saying this, but I don't want to make it a big deal on this platform right now. But this season was one of the most fucked up season. A lot of things went wrong. But I am glad that as much as I, I did not like this season, I'm glad that I experienced someone like you. In Big Brother's house, it was a breath of fresh air. You you brought a oh, different man. spice to the show, so oh, thank you, man. thank <laughs> Just you. Just coming from you, hey, <laughs> I feel like a goat. <laughs> no, you are, you are. Thank you so I much. Feel like a goat. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. I was so nervous. <laughs> I was so nervous driving here. I'm like, I wonder what is she gonna ask me, but look. <laughs> I, I want this one. If this is the only interview I want, I mean, I'm going to get post Big Brother. It's fine. With her, that's all I need. Anything else, it's, it's me against the world. <laughs> Girl, see, just go out there and just fly because that's what's left now. Just fly. Just fly. Thank you, madam. Just Thank fly. So <laughs> yeah. So I am done with my questions, but I see people sending in requests and I am guessing they want to maybe give you a shout out or talk to you. If we do you, if you don't mind, I would bring no, them no, on. No, I don't mind. I all don't right. mind at all. All right, great. So let me bring on um the first person here. This is let me see, what's the name of the person? Christine. Yeah, Christine. Okay. So let's bring on Christine. Hi. Hi, Christine. Oh, 
she dropped. Okay, Christine, are you here? Are you real, Christine? You can unmute your mic so that we can hear you. Hello? Uh, I don't know. Okay, is, is there anybody else out there that wants to give Lerato a shout out? You know, want to talk to her, maybe <laughs> encourage her, whatever. Maybe you have any other question? Sorry, love. If there's anybody out there that maybe has a question for Lerato, or maybe you want to give out words of appreciation or encouragement, you can just send in a request and I'll bring you on to speak. Christine, the floor is yours. Okay, I think there's someone else here. Um, let me let me bring on this other person. Zipot. Okay, there's Zipot here. Um, hello, Zipot. Where is the person? Sorry, Lerato. I, I know we're wasting no, your time. All right. No, um. voila. <laughs> All right, I'm trying to bring on this person. I've added this person, but the person is not here. Um, Christine is having connectivity issues, so I guess she would have, you know, come through. Um, yeah, if there's, is there anybody else, guys, so that we can let Lerato go? She was actually engaged in some work before she joined this Twitter space and she was just gracious enough to give us um, this one hour of our time, you know, to get into our mind. So if there's anybody else that wants to, you know, interact with Lerato, just send in your request and bring you on the stage so that you can, you can talk to her. Um, okay, so there's, oh, Lerato, I think one of your supporters is here. Lerato's bridesmaid, fancy. <laughs> Hello, bridesmaid. Y'all better be there when I get married. <laughs> A real wedding. <laughs> <laughs> you have to unmute your mic, Lerato's bridesmaid. I think you muted yourself. Okay, great. Hi. Bo, 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 bo. Hello. <laughs> Lerato Moody's. Hey, listen. Oh, Let me it. tell you. Your life is so infectious. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, they will tell you things, but when uh, you are the game, like, oh. yo, listen, when you spoke. Sorry, you know that in South Africa there's load shedding, and load shedding affects our reception, madam. Oh, <laughs> how good are okay. you? How good are you? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, no wonder yes. some people come to join. Ah, Saltina, economic issues now. <laughs> My boy, guys, what is happening? <laughs> Am I audible? Am I audible, guys? Yeah, you're audible. I'm just, I'm just quiet oh, oh, so right. that you and your daughter can talk. <laughs> Listen, she's, she's, so dumb, when she's you laughing. <laughs> when you spoke. When you spoke, the TL okay. was mad. Yo, maybe you can take. I see sugar mama, sugar mama, mama. I'm your. Lots of bridesmaid. Bridesmaid, you can go ahead and speak. Oh, I'm just quiet because I'm giving both of you the space to, you know, talk. So just go ahead and interact. Oh, with I don't know. It's it's the electricity. I don't oh, know what happened, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. We can hear you. Okay. Awesome. Lerato, listen. The streets, every time you were, you opened your mouth, the streets were on fire. They can tell you anything. I wish that they could see your intelligence. You are very intelligent. You played your game. Don't let anyone tell you anything. Okay? Like, I'm still there. Hello. <laughs> guys. I go, I, I, I give up. I give up. I'm talking alone here. I'm talking alone. No, carry on. on. We're hearing you. Carry on. Am I audible now? Yeah, you are audible. We can hear you guys perfectly. So just carry on. Okay. Lerato, um, is there anything that like um you regret I think doing? It's a reception. Yeah, it's my reception. Damn! Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry! <No>. Sorry! <laughs> Lerato, can you can you hear us? Yes, I can. 
Okay, so um, she asked a question. She she asked if there's anything you regret. She didn't finish it, but I think she means anything you regretted, you know, maybe in the house, maybe something you did or maybe something that happened. Yeah, but do you have any regrets? That's her question. Um, I think I only have one regret, and that is not being man enough to walk up to Bumi and speaking to her woman to woman, but rather speaking to my boys, which were my friends. I think that was not nice of me. Mm. That's the only regret. I think I was supposed to be. Yes, I want. I was. I. I was looking at it in a different way. The very mm. same way I've been saying. That. For me, I was. It was brand alignment for a certain reason, but that was stupid of me. I, I'm not proud of myself. No, I wouldn't want to anybody to do that to anybody. No, that's the only thing I regret, and I fully apologize. And I know we'll be good. Because, mm. well, we connect on another level, Bumi and I, you know. Mm. I was trying to, with Bumi, I was trying to to always find something against her. But she was, oh, we only had our thing in the kitchen, but she was very nice to me. Mm. I was like, why is she being too nice? I want to <laughs> find something, you know. But that yeah. is really the only thing that I do. And maybe... Not winning the money. Hey, long. <laughs> I can imagine. I regret not winning some money. Yeah. You know? But I, w- I kept saying that I'll win at the end. And I'm a winner now. Yeah. 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 You know what? Um, thank you so much for apologizing about the whole Mpumi's um, episode. I was very conscious to not bring it up because it's a very sensitive topic you know i would rather it just stayed quiet on the timeline than bring it up but thank you for for apologizing um you know for that so there's someone else here miss Anne. she yes. wants to speak with you so um let's her just carry on miss Anne. you're welcome to the conversation please fire on hi glory hi lerato hi <laughs> i'm so excited how you I'm doing so- I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I've been a people from like day one. I want to be in ghost to like go. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Am yes. I audible? Yes, you're audible. Please okay. carry on. Okay, I was saying I've been a sheep like from day one and I don't want you to go far and when you meet God, please treat him good. He has been down, he has been depressed. It's so, a happy yeah. day. Everyone's yeah, happy. It's a happy, it's, day. Happy, it's, a happy fr- it's good Friday. So, <laughs> yeah, it's good Friday. laugh with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's happy. Let's be happy. <laughs> yes. So, Leara, I just want you to continue being you. You played a really good game. They didn't understand it, but we understood. We understood you. And as a robotical and as a Lagos shipper, I'm really happy. And having this opportunity to speak to you is like, oh, I've made glory. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Anne. Thank you so much, um, Larato. I don't know if you heard everything she said. No, I couldn't. I didn't hear anything. Oh, so she was actually giving you accolades for your game, well played. And um, she said that she is a shipper of you and Papa Ghost. And that when okay. he comes out of the house, that you should treat him nice because he's been depressed. He's been down. He's been missing you in the house. And, you know, so when, when he comes out, you guys should just make it work. So I don't I'm, know. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening. I've got, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Clarato, what's your what's Hello. your answer to that? <laughs> you know, every time I'm gonna be honest for the first time, I've not spoken about ghost to hmm. anybody online. Yeah. And man, I miss him. Hmm. I miss him a lot. And even what's being said about him outside. Hmm. I'll be there for him. I'll yeah. be there waiting to 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 bring him back and making him realize who he is. You know, I know that his family will be there to support definitely, and hmm. I will also be there to support him through and through with his friends. So I'm 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 with him. He must hmm. never doubt that. You know, 
No man, yeah. let's wipe them. He'll wipe those tears and the, him be feeling sad. He'll be happy again. Yeah. Yeah. He'll be happy again. Nice. Yes. That is very nice. That's very nice. Thank you very much for that. Um, there's someone else that wants to speak with you. That is Zip Hot. So Zip Hot, hi. Yo, the floor is yours. Just go ahead. Hi, ladies. Can hi. you hear me? We can hear you. Hello. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> um, I, I wanted to Nice stay. to talk to you, Zip Hot. Oh, so Hello. nice to be here. I have an echo. I'm just trying to run away from my kids, so forgive me. <laughs> I wanted to say um, to Lerato, I um I was one of the. Yeah. Okay, the audio is delayed. So sorry, guys. I kind of lost my connection. I lost yeah. my connection, but I'm back. Um, okay. I think, yeah. So sorry about that. I lost my connection for a bit, but I'm back now. Um, Zip hot. Yes. Hi. Am I audible now? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I wanted to say to Lerato, I was one of the like many masses where her personality personality really got to me and the things that happened in the house until I watched her interview with Kosi and I really you know got to know her and her personality and I must say that changed my perspective in how I looked at her. Um. And I just have a I have one question for her because now, like I I do realize that I was watching the game with my emotions, and I, I actually loved more than ever after watching that. So my one question is that: Do you have any like plan to basically change? you know another people <laughs> in south africa and you being a strategy and just how you are and your authentic self moving forward okay all right lerato i don't know if you heard the question no i didn't hear the question what was the question okay um um, Zip Hot, can you can you ask the question again, please? Can you hear me, guys? Yes, we can hear you. Please go ahead. I can, can, hear can you hear me, babe? You can't. Okay, go ahead and ask, and I will. I would help her to, you know, I would help tra um, translate to her. Okay. Um. So my question oh. is: Does she have a strategy moving forward? to basically show more of her authentic self because I understand that it was a game and she, you know, she walked in, in the house as somebody else, basically portraying another character. Because Madame, as I, Madame, Madame Glory. Yes, Glory. yes. Yes, what was the question, Mad? Okay, okay. Oh, she was just, she was just asking, yeah. Um, so let me, yes. let me just say it. Um, I'm gonna have to mute Zip Hot because, um, all right. Um, Zip Hot, apologies for removing you from speaker uh, from the speaker, but because there's a lot of interference from your background, I'm gonna add you back the moment I, you know, relay this message to Larato. So Larato, what she's asking is if you have a strategy on how to really 
portray your authentic self. You know, looking at the fact that you went into the house to play the game and you brought on a whole new personality. So now you're out of the house looking at how a lot of people in South Africa see you. Do you have a strategy on how to, you know, make them see you for who you truly are? The strategy is to, to be myself now. You know, the strategy is for me not to talk, but to be who I believe I am. And they will see it through my work, through my engagements, um, as I go about my interviews, the work I'll be doing. So that is my strategy. Okay. All right. I don't think writing a board and saying, hey, this is me. And no, you mm. will see my work. You will see my engagements. You will see, you will see it yourself when you meet me. You will see it yourself when I'm around your kids. My aura does the talking. Mm. Yes. Great. So it will, Great. it will really be nice. Even when Great. I meet people, I can't wait for me to be with people. And they're like, wow, okay. Mm. Very different. I mean, well said, Lerato, well said. And I just want to add something to what Zipot asked, right? Um, I think when it comes to the conversation about Lerato's authentic self, right? Or even any other housemate the, on the show. I think one major thing people need to see before they see the game is an intelligent individual. They need to see that first. That, okay, for this girl to be able to play the game that she played in the house, it means she's smart. It means she's intelligent. It means she's well-learned. She's very exposed very enlightened because mm. it takes it takes someone that is very much all of these things i mentioned to be able to pull off such a game that you played so mm. when it comes to the conversation of your true authentic self i think that is what people need to see first that this person is very smart and very intelligent for them to be able to play the kind of game that they played and then they now need to see the other part which is that person that had about 22 other contenders, competitors in the house, under one roof, in a confined space. And she's not the only person that came into the house with a strategy. There are other people as well that came into the house with a strategy to either be the villain or to be the lover or to be the gossiper, the, the, the manipulator. Everybody came into the house with different versions of themselves or different amplified versions of their authentic self and so Lerato coming into the house with this version of herself I don't think there's anything wrong with that mm -mm. no yeah. nothing at all Especially exactly if I could get people to talk and for people to dissect every word I was saying mm -hmm. that means I was doing something right and that is the whole point of having such people to entertain you on television exactly. to keep you on your feet mm-hmm and I think people yes. are also missing the actual meaning or interpretation of the theme of the season. I always refer yes. to the theme of the season. What does Sia Mosha mean? How do it? It? Yeah. How do people define it? How do people define Sia Mosha? How? So, okay, okay if, I, if, I, if I could speak to maybe a, a particular fraction of the viewers, maybe 5 million people right now, I just have one question. How would you have expected these individuals to play the game in, you know, in a, in a season that comes with the theme of Sia Mosha? How, how would they have preferred for them to play the game? Very valid question. You know? Yeah. I mean, Lerato, let me even ask yourself, is there any other way you would have played the game? If I had been my true self, you know, mm -hmm. I would have been out maybe second week. Hmm. Because I think they were gonna walk over my feet. Hmm. They were literally gonna walk over my head. You know, I I had to I had to leave that girl in my in my house. I was like, ah, ah. Hmm. meaning disrupt or waste, and then we'll pay after. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. No, oh, well. there's no other way I would have played it. If I were to play, play it anyhow, or maybe like that again, I probably would want to check. 
Because, mm. yes, it, it, it does take a lot because you have to think everything through mm. before you say it. Yes, everything Absolutely. through. Absolutely. Because you never can tell how the viewers will interpret anything that comes out of your mouth. You, you can't. You, you're just in there. You're playing the game. People, people like me were out here. We're analyzing. Some people will analyze to the left. Some people will analyze to the right. You can to never, the right. Yeah, you can never dictate how people will interpret the show. <laughs> so mm -hmm. <laughs> whether you do good or you do bad, you come out, you still be on the chopping block. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're still chopping even today. I'm like, let me add some pepper. <laughs> Let's chop more. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay, yes. so we we have like um, three more people that want to speak with you. So there's Chennai. Chennai, you can unmute your mic and the floor is yours. Chennai. I hope, I hope I'm getting it right. Chennai. Shanai, please unmute your mic so that, you know, you can speak. There are other people that are, that are requesting to speak after you. Okay, if Shanai is not ready to speak, we're going to bring on Tracy. Uh, I think there's something wrong with their connection. Okay. Okay, okay. I think we have... Shanai, are you ready to speak? Okay, let's speak with um, Sifi Wei. Oh my God, I hope I'm getting the pronunciation right. Sifi Wei, please go ahead. Um, Hi, Mirajo. Okay. Hi. Yeah, hi. I she wanted can, to say hi. Hello. I wanted to say hi, Lerato. How are you? She can hear you. She can hear you. Carry on. Carry on. I wanted to say that I love you so much and I wish you the best. I'm well and how are you? Hello? She can hear you. She can hear you. Carry on. Hi, Carry on. I'm well. Thank you. Okay, I think I think there's a delayed connection and that's why that's why there's this there's this um connectivity issue. So um Shanai is here. Shanai? Hi. Hi Renato. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Hi. she can hear you. She can hear you. Please carry on. She can hear you. Okay. My question is is the outfit for Sunday ready? Want to see you slay, girl? Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lorato, did you get that? I didn't get it. I didn't get it, ma'am. Okay, so Shania is asking if your outfit for Sunday, the grand finale, is ready. She wants to see you slay. Hey! Hey, hey! My <laughs> outfit for the finale is going to be very funny <laughs> you guys are not ready no one is ready for my for my outfit nice surprises <laughs> no one is ready but it's gonna be very it's very different hmm. you know i i'm unpredictable when it comes to what i wear so hmm. even this no it won't be a wedding gown <laughs> nice and even if i do wear a wedding gown that would be fun but yeah that's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting to see what I'll be wearing. Okay, nice. We look forward to it. We look forward to it. Okay, um, Shanai, do you have any other question? No, just that I love you so much. You couldn't have played your game any different. Like keep being yourself, and you know naysayers are always there to talk. And you know dogs do not bark at as as a car that's not moving keep on moving mm. and you know growing because from mistakes there's growth you learn you know people will talk like mm -hmm. every uh -huh. season people will talk there's just people that are just that some people don't have sense but you <laughs> keep on moving keep on being your authentic self you mm. know we love you there are people that even though people say they are no robots because we are here we are an army and we are here and we support you <coughs> 
Mm. Anything that you need, we are here for you, girl. We love you. Mm. That's all. Nice. Thank you very much, Shinai. Thank you very much. Um, Larato, did you did you hear her? Larato? The network is quite unstable. Uh, I mean, I, oh, did you, you hear her? Now? Yeah, no, I, I didn't hear. hear her. I heard you only. Oh, wow. Oh, I don't know what's happening. Okay. Let me try and paraphrase all what she said. She said she yes. loves you very much. She said you wouldn't have played your game any other way. So you played your game the, the best way and she loves it. She loves you. Um, people are always going to talk, but do pay no attention to the naysayers. Um, continue being your true, authentic self. She loves you. Um, roboticals, your fans, your supporters, they are solidly behind you and supporting you. That was what she said. Oh, man. Uh, Shinai. Is it Shinai? Shinai. <laughs> yes, Shinai. Uh, if you can hear me, I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you to the Roboticals, too that have grown in numbers to be behind me. I didn't even know how fan base works, Glory. And I come out and I'm like, <laughs> how did these people come together? What are they supposed to do? <laughs> and it's amazing what they've been doing be <laughs> for oh, me wow. and just rooting for me. I I can't stop uh, extending my gratitude to the Roboticals and also to the people that have been with me through my relationship, you know. <laughs> they, they call themselves the shippers. So it's been very nice. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Yes. Let, let me just give you let me just give you a tip about what to do with your supporters. Carry them along. Yes. If you have any projects okay. you're cooking, now is the time yes. to unleash that project to the world. Okay. And okay. I, I'm just I'm just saying this as um an advice, you know, from someone that has actually seen people come and go with every season of Big Brother. You know, the show has a lifespan. I mean, every season yeah. has a lifespan. And it, it could be quite difficult to, to have the acknowledgements that you have now on the long run. So what you do with this immediate period that you are out of the house, it will really sort of aid, you know, whatever type of project you have planned in the nearest future, right? So you, yes. ha you have supporters, you have people that are solidly behind you and are ready to go all out with regards to any projects that you have now. Now is the time to start implementing, you know. I always say that before you go into the house, that's your planning stage. The moment you come out of the house, that is your implementing stage because time waits for no one. Your supporters, sadly, might not have the patience to wait for long, especially because there's a new season of Big Brother Niger coming up very soon. The Big Brother yes. Niger season is going to come up in July. So I always advise that between now and that time, I think that's just a space of, a, of about three months, there's a lot you can achieve in that three months. And your supporters are solidly behind you. Now is the time for you to start implementing so that you can get that, you know, that elevation that you need to sort of catapult you into any other thing you want to do. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for the enlightenment. Yeah. Thank you so much. You are Thank especially you. welcome. You're especially welcome. You. I mean, you have amazing people around you. Your handler is such an amazing person, by the way. I don't know her from anywhere, but she's such an amazing person. Um, just keep working closely with her. And you both are going to do great things together. And she should teach you how to use social media properly as well. <laughs> you, ma'am. I mean, I haven't had a phone since December. And I've, I've just been overwhelmed by everything. They're always shouting at me. They're like, where did you leave Lorato? We want the powerhouse out. I'm like, okay, guys, relax. But I, they, they, I'm gradually getting back on it. Gradually. Yeah. And all thanks to them. Like, they are amazing. All of them. My family. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, nice. Everyone. So yeah, Lato, it's been an 
absolute pleasure, you know, rubbing minds with you, getting into your head has been one thing I've been dying to do. And for me right now, <laughs> for me right now, it's craving satisfied. Yes. I don't need any more yes. than that. <laughs> I'm really happy that we had this conversation. Thank you so I'm much really for having it. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for honoring this this invitation. Thank you so much. And we shall meet again. See, you never can tell, Lo. Hmm. I might uh -huh, we will meet. <laughs> I might appear in South Africa sooner than expected, but you never can tell. <laughs> I might appear in your country sooner than expected. <laughs> Yes. I cannot wait. I it's gonna be epic. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Let me add let me let me share something with you. There is um there's a group of people they have um a little thing that they do chess in the slums. Okay. Right. And one of my stories is based on the kids that I worked with with chess in the slums and they are based in Nigeria. <laughs> so that? yes, I, I will come. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. I've actually, I saw a video about them. I can't remember if it's a documentary. By the way, my, yes. my, my older brother is, I don't know what they call these people that are very good with chess, but in his school, he is the teacher. He's the one that teaches the kids chess. So he's that good. Yes. He's, I don't know if they call them grand something, whatever, whatever. So I think it was through him I, I heard about this this group you mentioned, you know, the chess yes. in the slum. So chess my, slum. my sister, yes. come through, come through. Anytime I'm you're around, come through. I will hit you up. Great. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And thank you once again. All right. <laughs> thank you madam and have a blessed evening too <laughs> thank you too. and continue to be doing the, continue to do the great job that you do you know, thank you I, if it wasn't of the last video that i watched i don't think i would be talking to you right now <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much thank you ma'am all right bye bye, <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for a fantastic evening with Legato. Um, once again, special thanks to Legato, special thanks to Legato's handler as well for making this meeting possible. Um, I'm, I'm just super pumped. I am happy, more especially, that Legato has, by herself, given clarity to the many misconceptions about her, you know, um, People will always be people anyways, but yeah, the game is the game. As people always say, don't hate the player, hate the game. The game will make you think outside the box. You want to do the most, you want to do everything and whatever it takes to, you know, play the game and get ahead in the game. Lerata, Lerata went in there, she played her game and I appreciate her for her courage. It takes a lot of courage, you know, to be able to survive under such a climb as Big Brother's house. So, um, yeah, I am about to end this conversation right now, but I see that there's Tracy that still wants to say something. So I'm just going to quickly speak with Tracy and then we will end the conversation. Tracy, I don't know. I think you, I think you have a connection problem probably with your device because I have been struggling to add you since and I keep on approving and approving and approving and it's never, it's never picking you up. I don't know why, but yeah, this conversation has come to a close. We have to end now. Once again, I appreciate all of you for making our time to come join us. Thank you all so much. Um, I'm going to try as, as much as possible to see how I can invite other housemates. I would really love to have a conversation with Papa Ghost, of course. I mean, hey, <laughs> absolutely, yes. I want to have a conversation with Papa Ghost. I also want to have a conversation with um, um, Yolanda. Yolanda, I'm going to see if it will happen. I don't know. I, I, I'm just going to try and send out a request. If she's available to speak, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. I'd love to have a conversation with... Um, uh, what's his, is it, what's his name now? Mpumi. 
Mpumi, I would love to have a conversation with Mpumi as well. And yeah, so on and so forth. Just like that. So however it goes, I will inform you all. But in the meantime, this is a reminder that tomorrow, 3 p.m. WAT, our usual time, we're going to be having our live conversation again. Tomorrow is Saturday and we do this every Saturday. So guys, you can join us either via YouTube or um, via this x app that we're on right now all right tomorrow we're going to be discussing the winner of the season the show ends on sunday so tomorrow we're going to be discussing the top six finalists and you know we're going to be picking our own winner it's not like we know who's going to win anyways but it's just something i do with my youtube community every season of the show so i would love to, for us to do it again tomorrow so you are all specially invited and you're welcome in advance so all of that said thank you all so much for a fantastic time time out enjoy the rest of your evening and good night bye